These plants are invading. No, it's not the day of the Triffids. It's actually much scarier. Check this out. Leave your comments, ding the bell, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. So with us today is Dr. Lauren Waller. Dr. Waller is a researcher at Lincoln University and a postdoctoral fellow at the Bioprotection Research Center in New Zealand. And uh, Dr. Waller, welcome to the program. I'm, I'm curious if you could tell us, uh, first of all, the difference between native plants and invasive or introduced plants in a biological system. I mean, we've all seen, uh, whether it's the introduce, introduction of, uh, you know, earthworms into North America 500 years ago, or uh, rabbits in Australia, or, you know, and those aren't plants, I, kudzu in Georgia. Um, you know, we've seen the consequences of this. Um, but, but give us a little, uh, first of all, uh, some definitions, native plants, and, and what's, what's the fundamental difference between these native plants and these um, new species uh, around the world? You're in New Zealand, we're here in, in North America and the United States. Yeah, so, yeah, so um, e exotic plants are, are a global problem. They're, they're everywhere. And a native plant is one that has evolved in a place where it has um, evolved over time to interact with um, all the all the organisms in that environment. So friends and foes, you know, mutualists and enemies, herbivores, um, things like that. And um, and because of that, you know, there there are constraints on its on it, on their growth. So, for example, um, plants and environment they ha they accumulate pathogens, and uh, they have to find ways to dealing with those pathogens. And all these constraints prevent them from taking over a place. Um, and then when um, an exotic species comes, and that's one that has has done the same, has experienced those same sort of um, constraints and, and things in their own environment, when that's moved to a new place, um, those constraints are, are often removed. So, for example, um, a, a plant might leave its specialized pathogens at home and come to a new place where those specialists don't occur, um, and then that plant can, um, can, can take over a place and often does and become quite competitive. So yeah, so, so, yeah, so a native plant is one that is involved in it. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, so it's sort of like it's it's uh, it's lost its natural predators, be they bacteria or bugs or you know whatever it may, or other plants for that matter, kind of competitors as well as predators. You you you, uh, exactly. you mentioned that native plants therefore often grow more slowly than these exotic or invasive species, and that that has a consequence with regard to the sequestration of carbon. Can you explain that, please? Yeah. So basically. Um uh, what we've done is, is um, we've sort of connected the dots, I guess, um, between a, a, a really large body of literature in ecosystem and invasion ecology. So, so we know that um, it's these interactions with other organisms that um, that that are that explain why carbon is released from the soil. So, um, when a plant degrades um, its tissues in the soil, soil microbes um, release that. Um, release uh, CO2 into the atmosphere as a result. And we know that exotic plants, when they come to a new place, they interact differently with those um, uh, organisms in, in that new place. And so what we found was that it's, it's those differences in the way they interact that explains um, this increase in carbon uh, release from the soil in the new place. One of the, one of the things that has become real popular in the last decade or so in particular is uh, carbon credits paying for paying for you know like if you if you take a flight uh, there are organizations you can kick in you know of one percent of the cost of your flight or whatever mm -hmm. and uh, they will plant trees or they will sequester carbon uh, equal to what your seat on that airplane used or at least that's how they're promoted mm -hmm. um, and and I and I know some of the uh, criticisms of this is that some of these organizations are simply going to parts of the world where land is really, really cheap and has been deforested mm -hmm. and bringing in mm -hmm. whatever trees uh, are, uh, seedlings uh, are cheapest, uh, whether they're native or not, and just planting forests basically like, well, like, you know, uh, FDR did in the 1930s in the United States. Um, mm -hmm. Although those were probably mostly native species because it was America reseeding America. Um, how does this research that you're talking about inform us about how, if we're going to do commercial carbon sequestration, or if we're simply trying to preserve natural ecosystems so that they're more efficient at carbon sequestration, we should go about doing both those things? 
Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, our, our research just suggests that that, that native plants um, are, are are slower cycling, um, and potentially as a result of these constraints with other organisms, right? So that planting species that um, can that can um, that come to a new place, you know, these these exotic species, they they can accelerate um, the carbon release in those soils. Um, yeah, it's. An interesting aspect of our work was that um, we found that it's actually um, the a newer. Um, so there's you know there's afforestation and reforestation, right? So um, clearing lands actually um, for new exotic plants is actually um, uh, what our work suggests is that that will result in a much higher release of CO two. And so that yeah, that maybe these these programs um, should really focus on on using natives in those programs. Yeah, it it, it just makes a lot of sense. It's a very straightforward process. Mm-hmm. This is uh, a final question. I'm guessing that this is uh, these are basically universal principles. Uh, even though you're doing that work in New Zealand, that uh, what you're learning should be applied uh, around the world. Yeah, you know, it's it's funny. I I. I Yes, um, I, I, I would, I, I'd imagine, but I think that we might see very, very different results um, um, in different places. You know, uh, it might depend on um, productivity. Um, you know, this, New Zealand's a very productive um, environment, and so um, it might be, it might be quite different. But I think, yeah, I think that the, the basic principles probably will be universal um, for sure. Fascinating and, uh, stuff, Dr. Yeah. Warren Waller. Uh, research uh, scientist at Lincoln University, postdoctoral fellow at the Bioprotection Research Center in New Zealand. Dr. Waller, thanks so much for dropping by today. Great talking with you.